Hey folks, welcome to this episode of the Everyday Millionaire Podcast and the Mindset Matters Edition, where I'm joined by my wife and Olympic mental performance coach, Stephanie hanlon Francy. Together, Stephanie and I engage in a conversation about different aspects of what we refer to as Mindset Matters. We believe that we're living in and through one of the most impactful global events in history. And let's face it, few have trained for or are equipped to deal with the life that is unfolding before them. The need to pivot in your business, your career, or perhaps deal with shifting family dynamics lies before many. We hope to inspire you to ask yourself questions or pause to consider how you view your world, your life. We'll invite you to check in on where you are on your journey, and are you still clear on your intended destination, or has it changed? Join us for this in our series of Mindset Matters. Listen in, enjoy. Hey folks, welcome to the Everyday Millionaire Mindset Matters. Stephanie, welcome. Hey, hon. Beautiful day here in the Fraser Valley, poolside studio, and uh, feeling a little inspired today for our Mindset Matters segment. Moi aussi. Me as well. I'm excited about this topic. <laughs> okay. That was French. I was going to say, what the heck what does that mean? <laughs> okay. Anyways, so we're going to go with a topic that, you know, really spoke to me earlier today, which was when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And I've used that quote for years. It's a Wayne Dyer quote. I think it's really important to often check in with ourselves and see how we're looking at the world. You know, the mindset matters component of how we evolve as human beings, how we see the world, how we exist in this world really boils down to how we perceive it, our perception, and of course, our perspective. I believe that our perspective shifts our perception. And they're two completely different things. And sometimes they get mixed up. Mixed up. Yeah, they do. And so, you know, why do we want to even have this conversation today? You know, when we talk about the origination of Mindset Matters, a lot of it was driven just because of what was happening in the world around COVID and the pandemic and lockdowns, the divisiveness it was creating, the polarity, the challenges in relationships, whether that be family, you know, spouse, like as in significant others, uh, family, friends, business acquaintances and business dealings. I mean, gosh, it was really, and now that things are less locked down and we're kind of more open and gosh, we actually think, oh, maybe the sun is coming up over there. And we, in fact, will get back to some form of real what we felt was freedom back in, you know, 2019. So that, again, shifts around perspective and perception because there are consequences and we're seeing and we continue to hear and see the divisiveness as things open up again. So I'll quit ranting there, or at least uh, what I wasn't ranting, I was just trying to create a context for this particular conversation. No, it was perfect because, you know, this also came from a place of our perception creates our reality. And we started talking about reality and what it really is, you know, and, and then it kind of goes down the rabbit hole of, you know, truth. What's my truth? What's the truth? What's reality? You know, what is reality? Because I've had conversations recently with people I was thought I was close to, and they have a completely different experience and perspective about what reality is to them right now. And I'm really interested in digging into this a little bit more. Well, I think there's a conversation to be had about what we're seeing in the world as it's opened up again, as mandates and travel opens up and people can get around. We generally feel a much lighter, in general, a much lighter view and a much you know happier group of people in general. Uh, it hasn't changed the divisiveness. There's still a, a large group. There's still a number of people that are you know either agreeing with what's going on or disagreeing with what's going on. Yeah, it's a black and white situation. It's a black and white situation. And that is perspective and perception. So the insights that I would like to share here today is when you change the way you think you look at things, the things you look at change. And the I think the underbelly of what I would call the underbelly of the beast is this anger, this dissatisfaction, this sense of loss. People are still trying to, and probably, you know, different degrees of success, mend relationships, uh, mend friendships, uh, you know, family discourse that was created through this vax anti-vax, you know, mandate, anti-mandate. I mean, all, these are just some of the conversations that are going and on. think of the languaging in that and how powerful the marketing of the languaging is. Because the tactics that were being used over the last couple of years into communication were very mindful 
it actually makes me a little bit embarrassed of being an NLP uh, specialist because that was really what the grounded narrative was based on was neurolinguistic programming. And people were making decisions based on their perception. And it shifted perspectives on people that I was shocked by the tactics that were are still being used. And the language is so powerful. So what I want to get into today is how does that shift our perspective? And why do we want to potentially shift our perspective? Because what if my perception is just right? Well, I think there's a fundamental that our perspective is always being challenged, right? So we're being challenged by the headlines, by the news media, by the experts, whatever side those experts happen to be on. We are given a perspective, which then impacts our perception. And our decision making. Right. When we look at what's happening in the world, you know, the the guidance that in the, I guess, discussion I'd want to have today is to help people step back and look at their perspective and say, you know, am I, am I just having to be right? Is it, no, I've done all the reading and this is what it is. And I'll give you an example of what showed up for me in the word research. And of course I do a lot of research and I do a lot of research around a number of things, I guess, primarily what I'd be known for in terms of the economic research I do and the economic research that the team does given real estate and economy and the things that we're looking at. But it is interesting that a big part of the research and the word research, if you break it down, is about research. Researching. So it's like research. Researching. Re-look. It means search more, search again. And it really is. And when I heard it in the context, another context, which was somebody talked about scientific research. And there is, you know, that's the thing about research. That's the thing about science is it's not definitive. It rarely is, although they do have peer-reviewed research. So in other words, the research is peer-reviewed, which gives it another level of credibility, and this makes it more real. But it doesn't mean it's static because it is science and things change. So the point is, is that research is always about researching. So can we change our perspective? Can we look at things differently and have a different perception of what's going on. And how do we take our perspective and our perception and maybe step back and look at something that we maybe don't agree with differently? Because if, why would we do that? Well, think about wanting to mend a relationship, for example, something that was maybe busted open based on opinions or one person's watching mainstream media and the other person isn't, and and they have completely different experiences. So Let's say they want to mend the relationship. The first thing we have to do is be able to see the situation from the other person's perspective. And that's really difficult to do, especially if you've been right and you've been right fighting this whole time. I think looking at things two or three or four different ways is really important, especially if you want to step back into relationships with somebody who maybe has hurt you or, or maybe someone you have uh, offended with your need to be right. There's a lot of conversation that could be had around just what you said. You know, there's mending relationships that are decisions that are being made or have been made. And, you know, you can add to that, for example, the degree of happiness or dis-ease that somebody's feeling or unhappiness. I'll use it. I'll say it that way. You know, what is it that we're having happen in our life that is leaving us feeling like we need more, want more? And that is often just stepping back and have an appreciation. So within the stoic world, I'll, I'll share this is within the, within the stoic, stoic world, there's a, a, a Latin term that is memento mori. And this was actually Ryan Holiday did the book. And when I did the studies of, or the meditations, stoic meditations, uh, Cheryl, a good friend of ours, and Cheryl works with Rain, gave me that as a gift. And every so often I have it on my shelf and every so often I look at it. I'd put it in my pocket, but I'd lose it for sure. But anyways. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm reminded. So momentum mori, which means nothing more than you're going to die. Yeah, it's going to be over soon. So there is a phrase, you know, I think it was um, Marcus Aurelius who said, you could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. So realizing that can change your perspective. I had a milestone birthday this summer. And you're, you know, we both have had some really big 
shifts and changes in our lives over the last little while. And the mortality thought process that that popped up for me over the last four, five, six months around what if this is my last, you know, circle around the sun? What if, what if this is it? Mm-hmm. Have I done everything I need to do? Have I said what I need to say? Am I as complete as I can be with the situations and the people that have come into my life or who maybe who have left my life or I've left their life, etc.? How can I, how can we really focus on our what's next if we think that we're going to live forever? Because we're not. We're not. You know, there's a, a phrase that, let me go back. So I would often joke that, you know, I look in the mirror or I look at my birthday and I go, oh, I'm so, I I'm, I don't want to get old. I don't like getting old. You know, the wrinkles and the aches and the pains that go along with the aging, you know, being north of 60, you start to realize that, gosh, you know, I'm probably not as indestructible as I thought I was after all. Yeah, but you're still hot. <laughs> okay, thanks, honey. But you said something that was really interesting, which for me really struck home because you said, you know, something along the lines and you can correct what you would say, but, you know, just be happy that you're around to get old. Yeah. You know, and, and it's a privilege not liking for everyone. Well, you know, this is, again, perspective, right? So I had two sisters pass away, one at 56, one uh, just, you know, a little bit younger than I am today. My two sisters did not have that opportunity to grow old. So that is always a little bit of a reminder for me. You know, somewhere in my psyche, it's like, okay. You know, as much as I want to bitch about the world or things aren't right, or I should be bigger, better, stronger, richer, uh, richer, whatever the story <laughs> is, the one thing that I can always get grounded in is that I'm here and I'm healthy today and I need to appreciate that. That shifts perspective. And, you know, when we go back to the quote of Marcus Aurelius, which is, you could leave life right now, let that determine what you do and say and think. So when we, embrace that thought process, it then shifts and takes some of the energy off of maybe how we view the world. So let's go back to talking about the divisiveness, the polarity that really launched this podcast around people being unhappy, being depressed, even uh, being sad, the loss, the real uh, breakdown of relationships and the questioning of oneself and the change in the world. And questioning society, questioning, questioning what's, society. Ex- what's external to us as well. So it's not just about, it, there's a lot of lack, uh, there's a lack of trust and a lack of belief that is really permeating right now that I'm finding so interesting with a lot of people that I'm working with. Well, we're seeing it a lot. And and we although we're talking in this context about what the results of the pandemic were, we've got a shifting government, a changing government, uh, we could get sucked down the vortex of the hostility, the anger, the angst, the frustration that goes along with it. And, and by the way, that is on either side. The divisiveness still exists. And so it doesn't matter, you know, let's just be agnostic to which is right. It really is about... Are we buying into it one way or the other too heavy? Are we getting sucked into the vortex? And uh, what stand are you taking and where are you putting your stake in the ground? And what is it that you're, what's your next, you know, profile pic on Facebook? What is your next cause? Because there's going to be another one. Oh, the bashing and the name calling. Oh. And anyways, I've really backed off of, and I'm going to give you a different, I'm going to take this down a slightly different path. So should you think that this is just about COVID and the pandemic? In my world, it's also about real estate. We're seeing this shift in the real estate. We're seeing this shift in the economy. And I'm I'm listening and, oh my gosh, it's like the sky is falling. The world is coming to an end. And there's all of this intensity and focus on interest rates. Got it. But, and and the anticipation of an upcoming recession, got it. And I can't say I disagree. However, as I do my research, I also research and I continually research. You know, when I look at what's happening economically, we have this big focus on interest rates. We make the Bank of Canada wrong. We make our federal government wrong. Really easy to do that, by the way. But we have- Oh, they make it easy. But, but yeah, exactly. But they. But the point of it is this: we have to get grounded in some some realities and give some perspective. So my perspective is number one: 
we're still not in an economic recession. We are trending downwards. We haven't even had one month of negative GDP growth, let alone two quarters of negative GDP growth. Yeah, we're not the U.S. We're I not, think people we, forget that. Well, but you get inundated with what's happening, plus all the YouTube experts that happen to go along with it. Now, on the other side of that, unemployment remains quite strong. And although it's trending you know, it's trending up. And I mean, it's, it went from like, whatever, 5.2 to 5.4. I mean, gosh, a 6% unemployment rate is fantastic. It's still a very healthy economy. The point that I'm trying to make here is that let's just shift perspective and realize that a lot of mistakes were made in the world of real estate. A lot of the headlines that are being driven are by homeowners and want to be homeowners and first time home buyers, not making any of that wrong, by the way. And, but in the context of the conversation that I have within the rain community, this is about investors. And so, you know, there's the, whatever, whatever it is, it's, it's fight, flight, or freeze. And many people are frozen. And yet I see those that have a different perspective that are saying, no, this is where opportunity exists. This is where the masses are going one direction. And I want to slow down and go, and why, why do I want to follow the masses? They've been wrong every other single time. And this is where opportunities is. Now, this isn't to sell anybody on investing in real estate. It's to just give an example of a shifting perspective and the perception that we can then take on of what is really in front of us. It doesn't have to be fight, flight, or freeze. It can actually be, hold it. Let's just look at what's really going on. Slow down, slow cowboy. Down. Exactly. Slow down and really shift. So whether that's, in this case, real estate business decisions that we have to make, it really is stop. Look at your perspective and go, am I right fighting? Am I hooked into the intensity, the drama, the, the ego of only having this perspective. And the question I love, and I this is how I shift my perspective and my perception can shift, is, is the question I ask in a lot in my journal is, what if I'm wrong? So I come up with a very strong opinion about something or I have done all my research and then I've researched it again and looked at it. Am I getting both sides? Like there's there, that's your opinion, there's my opinion, then there's the truth. You know, so... The question I land on myself at the end when I'm really getting grounded is, what if I'm wrong? And I don't mind being wrong. And I think that's one of the hardest things about people shifting their perspective or perception and reality is that they can't be wrong. And if they're wrong, that means something to them. It's about being making a, a huge mistake and I have to defend it to the earth because I can't be perceived as being wrong. Well, the, yeah, of course, that's the right fighting side of it. I think there's some signals for it all here in this, folks. And that is, you know, if you've come to a place where you just want to call somebody an idiot, even though you may feel you're right. Or if a you, racist or a misogynist. Uh, yes. If you're coming to that, then there's a place where probably you need to step back from it and go, OK, aside from the name calling, what if I shift my perspective. So as much as I don't like some of our federal politics, I do force myself and I have to force myself to listen and look at other views of our federal government, some of our MLAs, the politicians that are out there and say how they see it. And although I don't agree, at least I know why I don't agree. And I have, a, I've, I've looked at the other side of it. So I think that is something that we can all do is just slow down, look at the other side of it. Yes, you can go be a right fighter, but check in. And this isn't to say be passive. I, I think we got to be careful about that. Don't be afraid to take a stand for something, but also be open to the fact that some part of your thesis, some part of your theory could be wrong and you may have to adjust. It doesn't mean you have to take everything off the table. It's about adjusting. You know, there's lots of those narratives like a plane that's going from, you know, Edmonton to Toronto or East Coast to West Coast, you know, they're literally adjusting their course dozens or hundreds of time along the way. A boat that's sailing somewhere is often adjusting course. It's what we have to do. We have to look at it and go, okay, we're maybe off line a little bit. Let's get things back. Yeah. And I think where we have to maybe focus now as we bring this home is that what are you so committed to and what, it, what do you want to bring forward and how right do you need to be? And if you need to be right, I would say take a step back before you fight for that. Because the minute new information comes or you've researched something else, can you then shift your own 
narrative to move forward. Right now we're being, uh, it's so polarized and people are, are taking sides still two and a half, three years into this bullshit and they're taking sides and mm. making other people wrong. What if we're all wrong right now? What if we're all wrong and just say, okay, let's step back and say, okay, we need to see this through different lenses. I think there's a lot to be said for the breakdown of relationships that are so many and look at your own life and maybe some relationships that have been challenged or have been broken off and or and new ones that have come in because of it has which it is created amazing. space for new ones yes but always self-check and it's just a way to exist in this world and the signs are again you know i, I talk about name calling i it, i joke about it but it's not really joking about it. if we've regressed to a point of all oh, the best we can do is call somebody a name stop and go, okay, there's, there's got to be more to this argument than that. And my mom always used to say sarcasm is the lowest form of humor. There you go. So we look at that and then we step back from it and some of the decisions we're making, some of the decisions we want to make, whether that be career driven investment decisions that we're trying to make and trying to say, well, how do we protect ourselves or how do we create a path to go down for the future given what's going on? Uh, really is, you know, back to the word research and really re- search. Take another look at it. Mm -hmm. Look at perhaps the perspective of that friend, that family member, that significant other, and see if you can't soften around it. Like I say, I'm not saying or suggesting that we all become very passive in our world. It's just understanding that we carry a charge in our body, which is not healthy. We know that. Uh, it is not literally not healthy, not mentally, emotionally, or physically. And when you say charge in your body, I think just let's just Put a pin in that and define that because when you're fired up or excited or and you let that electrical energy come into your body, we call it a charge. And I know when I'm in a charge that there's something on the other side that I haven't looked at or I haven't healed or my ego is taking over. That charge in your body is what is called, I call it dis-ease. Right. There's, there's, and so my only goal in that moment is to find peace, is to get through it, find the conversation, do some journaling, do some meditation, have the conversation that I maybe don't want to have. Right. But in the moment, that charge in my body is a signal, it's feedback. And I think if our listeners are moving through and, and making decisions, I mean, we've had some massive decisions in our life that we've had to do. And people have made in our businesses massive decisions in their own life that have taken them away from us. So there's a lot of gaps right now when people are making decisions and we're moving through. And all we can do is step back and try to see things through a different set of eyes. And and see if we can see the perception, the perspective, and or the reality of the other human being that we're trying to deal with and, and work with. Well, I think there's a part of it just to keep, you know, just to make sure we're clear on the charge part of it. You know, charge, the charge, when I say we're in a charge, it's generally based around uh, being angry, frustrated, angst, worry, stress. Those are all putting charges in our body. We carry it. You know, we, our, our breathing gets shallow, our, our gut gets tight. You know, these are all things that get us into a state that's just not healthy for our, our physical body. And, you know, so I think that's, that's really where we want to just take some time to, like you say, we talk about it a lot, meditate, breathe, uh, examine, self examine what's going on. Uh, you used the word gap. We were just talking about that in the last episode and we talk a lot about it lately is that we continue to look at the gap rather than the gain. And sometimes that's really the focus, which is I know for myself, uh, since I read the book, uh, The Gap and the Gain, it really is me. I'm constantly checking in when I'm looking at the gap and saying, okay, but where was the gain? What was the gain in all of that? And it really does shift how you view the world. And how you listen to people. I'm noticing even at, at home where we're cooking or we've got people over and all of a sudden I'm hearing people talk about what's not there or what's negative or where the gap is. And I can't not shift and say, okay, but what was the gain? Yeah. And it's so irritating, I think too, because yeah. some people still want to vent. They still want to, and I'm like, no, let's not. It's true. But when we sit around the table, you know, this is, uh, you know, folks, we have our chosen family that were many of us sitting around a table. And one of the things is, you know, while we're breaking bread, bread or even before breaking 
uh, Brad, will ask the question, what was your win today or what was your gain today? And uh, it's just a way to set the tone for conversation around a meal that isn't all dark and going the other direction. It really is. We go around the table uh, with our chosen family and ask the question, you know, what was your win? What was your win? Think about that. You know, if families got back to that again and, and breaking bread and sharing meals. And that's, I think, one of the positives and one of the things that has come out of a, a lot of this lockdown kind of stuff is that maybe people have circled back and started to hang out with their families differently. And maybe, you know, you know, we always had to, you know, as hard as it was as a teenager, we had to find something that was good. My mom would not let us leave the table until we were able to shift into being positive. And she was very critical, you know, very, you know, very, had a very critical mind. So it was different for us to be then challenged all the time. We weren't raised with, oh, you know, eat all your food because there's starving kids in Africa. It wasn't that kind of perspective. It was, okay, how do you elevate your conversation with people to make sure you're pulling them forward with you? Well, one of the great things about doing that particular work is that when we are constantly worried about future, we're not present to what is. We negate the good things or some of the wins that we've had, however small they might be, uh, could be, I got out of bed on time. You know, I got to work on time. You know, it could be very sim or very small, but the point is, is that if we don't take the time to do that, we continue to stay future thinking, worrying about what we can't control. doesn't leave us present. We've had these conversations many times. So folks, really, this was about changing the way you look at things. So the things that you look at change and whether that be, relationships, a life, decisions that we make. It really is stepping back and gaining another perspective. And sometimes that perspective can be gained by having a conversation with others or seeing how others might see it. And take a look at the questions you're asking yourself, but also that you're asking like, what questions are you asking in your journal? What questions are you asking the universe? What questions are you asking your spiritual self? Because I love the line is the quality of your life is based on the quality of the questions that you ask. That was a Dennis Waitley quote from a hundred years ago. And it been, it's been repeated over and over and over again, but it's so, so important. Yeah, that's a, we could do a whole podcast on the questions because that's the statements. Great. It makes sense intellectually, but then start trying to ask yourself the questions and we have to ask ourselves really hard questions and we have to keep going in layers to get to those questions. So folks, hopefully this podcast has had some meaning for you. Stephanie, thanks for joining me on our Mindset Matters podcast. That was fun. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. If you found value in the podcast, please take the time to rate and review and share with others, share with your friends as it is my goal to always improve and to provide the highest value for you, the listener. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions you'd like answered, please email me at ceo at raincanada.com. That's ceo at reincanada.com. I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, Patrick out.